Hello and welcome to Isolocity's quick product tour. In this video, we're going to learn how to add documentation into Isolocity. This can be done by clicking on documents in the left sidebar. So before we start adding our documents, there are a few settings that I want to point out. And these settings can be found by clicking on your initials or profile picture in the top right hand corner, followed by team settings. You would then search for the module you're looking for, in this case documents, and that would bring up the document settings. So a couple of things to point out here is that you have the ability to customize and edit the names of the four document stages, which are here. So by clicking on the pencil, you'll be able to edit the text. A few other settings to point out is the one that requires an e-signature for approvals. So this means that the person must add their password when giving an approval. You can also automatically create a change control report for new revisions, and you can require change control closure for final approval. So let's turn those three on. Another thing to point out is the section for time zone here. So when you're adding your documents into the system, there is a cover page that will generate once it's approved, and this will have it stamped in UTC time. So if you don't want it to be in UTC, then you would wanna come change your time zone here in team settings or also in organization settings to have your correct time zone. Let's go ahead and click on documents. And the documents module is where you would store any kind of documentation, such as SOPs and work instructions. So you don't want to store your forms in this module because if you're going paperless and filling them out in Isolocity, they will need to be entered into the specifications module. That's what allows it to become fillable in inspections. Adding it in the documents module will not allow for that to happen. So before we can create a document, we have to add document types. And that can be done along the bottom here. You would just click on document types. So here's the list of our document types. You can see this database already has one for SOPs, labels, and letters in agreement. So we're going to create a new document type for work instructions. All you have to do is add the name and click create. Now you can see the new one that was just added. So now going back into the documents module, we can create our document. You would start by filling in some document information, including the approval matrix, if you have one. So there is a video on how to set up an approval matrix if you want to check that out before continuing with this video. But essentially, it will detail who has to sign off and approve each stage of the document. You also have the ability to add a parent document. So for example, if we're creating a work instruction that is related to this SOP, we can link the two together. So I'm gonna add that here so we can see what the parent and child relationship looks like. And then we're gonna enter the document name. So for example, work instruction 001, proper hand washing. Next, you would add in your document type, so work instruction. And you can also add a department. So adding a department is optional, but it's a good tool for organizing and separating your documents. So I'm gonna select quality assurance and create the document. Once the document is created, you can see at the top here is where the link between the parent and child document is. So by clicking on SOP001, it will take me to this document and provide a list of child documents associated with it. And again, by clicking on here, it will take me back to the child's document. So once you create your document, there's a few more fields you can fill in for document information. You can add a last review date. You can set up a frequency and duration of how often this document should be revised. You can also set up a next review date Furthermore, you can set up a training program and add employee groups. So there is a video on creating your training programs and when you would add these here. So after you've added all your documents into the database, I would suggest watching the training program video next, especially as you're building out your training. So you can ensure that it's done correctly and know when to use these two fields. The next section here is for document owners and subscribers. 
with the main difference being owners can edit the document, whereas subscribers can only view. Scrolling down, there's a section to drag or upload files. So this is where you can upload your file associated with this document. You can also change the revision number and add a revision date. You have the ability to add a document location. So if it's somewhere within your facility that you want people to know of, you can add that here. You can link a change control report here as well, which comes into play more so when you're creating revisions on your document. You can also add an external link. So if there's a Google Drive or a OneDrive link that your employees should have access to for this document, you can add that here as well. And then you can add in any notes. So the file will not be uploaded until you save the document on the bottom. So now you can see that it uploaded my file. Let's go ahead and approve the document. So we're gonna approve for stage one. And in the approval matrix, we had users and departments set up. So by clicking on the thumbs up button, you'll be able to see who signed it. And by hovering over the check mark, you'll be able to see their name and the date and time as well. So again, we're gonna continue approving. So here in stage three, it was set up as a department. So you can see that the quality assurance department signed off. And by hovering over the check mark, you can see who did it and what date and time. And now we're going to approve again to stage four and the document is now approved and effective. So by clicking on my file, you can see here the cover page that generates. So this will not say Isolocity, it will show your logo if you've uploaded an organization logo. You can see the name, who the final approval was by. There's also a link to the full approved records. And you can also see when this was generated and when it's valid still. So there is document control in that sense, as it's only valid until the next day. So in this case, March and May. When you need to create a new revision, there's this little gray button here at the top where you would click new revision. And since we turned on the change control settings, this pops up to automatically create the change control. So we're gonna do so so you can see what that looks like. So now we have revision two of our document. And you can see here that the change control report is linked. So by clicking on here, it will take you to that change control. So you do have that direct link. So while this is not a you do have the ability to switch back to revision. Employees will not be looking at old revisions, thinking they are current. This is the matter.